set your ass, set your ass down. Go back on that set out. You, I don't need to show me no perk. <laughs> I wanted to actually uh, react to this this video that I have up uh, with these young ladies uh, twerking uh, in the gymnasium of a church. Um, now, Thaddeus Matthews is a pastor out of Memphis, Tennessee, who pastors uh, Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries, and he's actually well known by the fact that he's the known as the the cussing pastor or the cursing pastor and you know he has no no issues about having a uh, racy language and i just kind of thought that this would be like the perfect opportunity to kind of speak to two sides of uh kind of what i've been talking about lately in my videos it's so easy to look at certain things or certain videos and just automatically assume that hey well because these people are doing what they're doing you know they can be saved and then at the same time for people who you know feel like you know i'm saved and you know the bible really doesn't speak to certain issues then i can just kind of you know do what i want really it's good to kind of you know if we could just kind of speak to both sides um you know, now obviously, you know, these, these, these women, you know, they should not be doing what they're doing, especially in the house of the Lord. Now I understand that, you know, the churches, you know, we are lively stones and the body of believers make up the church, you know, however, you know, when we come into, you know, a place where we come to, to worship, I believe there should be, uh, you know, more, uh, formalities a little bit more uh decorum you know now this is not trying to be you know quote unquote religious to say you know you you have to have you know the finest suits and all of these things you know that's not the case at all but you know we are to uphold ourselves in a manner that's integral and has dignity and, you know, we are ambassadors of Christ. You know, that's how Paul, you know, describes us as ambassadors of Christ. So we can't be out here saying that we're representing Christ. And then, you know, here we have this sexually charged, you know, dance off where women are, you know, they're shaking their rear ends. They got them bouncing up and down. And, you know, it's it's just not of the Lord. It's different if you have a man and a woman who are married and in the privacy of their own home or, you know, somewhere private, you know, they are able to do, you know, what men and women, you know, do. That's different. You know, I absolutely find nothing wrong with, uh, you know, speaking to my wife you know, in a desirable sexual manner, you know, that's my wife, the same way as my wife may speak to me that way. That's my wife. So, you know, I feel like under the guise of marriage, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. You know, if we, if we actually look at the word, the word says how, you know, woman was made for man, you know, women came from man and they were made for man. So, as far as this this aspect, this kind of a sexual aspect of it, you know, we were made to be attracted to one another. Because honestly, you know, what did God tell Adam and Eve in the garden? He told them to be fruitful and multiply. Now, biologically speaking, how can one be how can one be fruitful and multiply? When they come together and procreate there has to be a an attraction to one another. And, you know, we know we know how the body works. You know, we know where I'm presuming we know where babies come from. We know how they're conceived. 
And that can only happen when desire and attraction and arousal is involved. So there's nothing wrong with with being attracted to your spouse's body and their presence and their personality. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's how it should be. There's nothing wrong. It's just that when we go about those things according to how the world does it, then that's that's what makes the difference. God has things instituted in a way that he deems pleasing and right and holy. But when man, just like how Adam and Eve made the decision to do what they want to do, when man decides they want to do what they want to do, that's where the problems come in. You know, used to hear people say, you know, the world is kind of creeping into the church. Well, now it seems like the, the church doors are just open and they're just... Any and everything is really just kind of blowing in into the church. And people don't want to be considered, you know, religious or a Pharisee. It's almost like, you know, you can take grace too far. And I believe that's what, you know, Paul was talking about. It seemed like he talked to both aspects of it. To those people who were self-righteous, who figured that they could, you know, earn, they could merit salvation by works of the law. And then you have people who were believers who just kind of still did what they wanted to do because, hey, we have grace. You know, okay, we're not under the law, we're under grace, so that means we're free to do what we want to do and it's okay. And, you know, Paul was, Paul let it be known, you know, for salvation purposes, you know, nothing can undo that grace once you've accepted it and, you know, thank God for that. However, you know, he lets people know we're all going to be judged for what we do in the flesh. So we're all going to have to give an account. Yes, even us believers, we all have to give an account for what we do. And for teachers and, and pastors, you know, they even have a bigger responsibility to attend and, and feed the flock, you know, according to how the Bible says. Now they are leading other people and, and having impact on how they lead their lives and what they see is biblical. You know, these women, I don't know if they're all single. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, regardless of the facts. You know, they shouldn't be doing this, you know, period, just but it's especially, you know, in a church. Now, do, do I think there's anything wrong with dancing and say, well, you have to be married to dance and kind of have fun and move around? No. But, you know, that type of dancing is, is like how, you know, strippers dance or what they would call twerking. That type of dance where you're basically just moving certain parts of your body to attract attention to those areas. Then, you know, you're going to become a stumbling block. I've even seen Christian swingers. I saw an interview with a couple who called themselves Christian swingers. And they call themselves getting on the level of, of people who are swingers in order to be able to make them feel comfortable and preach the gospel. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, you know, I, I can't see what's in their heart. I can't. Only God knows what's in their heart. But in my opinion, from what I see on the outside, it's almost as if there are certain things that that people try to they try to mask their their carnal desires and they use the church as a way of feeling comfortable about it so i i really can't imagine you preaching the gospel while you you and your spouse are swinging with another couple i mean i just you know i i mean you have your logic and they they try to use paul to say as a lawbreakers i came as a lawbreakers and you know, and I'm paraphrasing it, but, you know, they try to make, they try to use that, that, that logic to say, we're going to be how you are so that we can get on your level. So we don't feel like I'm above you. I can get down on your level and then I can get you the message in the hopes that you will come up. But nowhere, nowhere does the Bible say that we have to compromise who we are. If anything, we are to uphold and not waver. You know, 
Christ never had to come down on people's level. Now he sat with harlots and the tax collectors and the publicans and you had the Pharisees saying, why is he sitting over there with those sinners? See, there's a difference. There's a difference between being around, you know, people like that or anyone sinful for that matter. Staying who you are and you giving that gospel message versus you participating in the sinful acts. You see, there's nothing wrong with to say you're talking to pro Well, we should be going out to the jails and talking to prostitutes, talking to the drug dealers, the gang members, you know, any and all people. The Bible says we're to go out and make disciples of all men. There is no stipulation to say, well, only the people that look clean, they look like they got it all together. Don't go to drug dealers. Don't go to drug users. Don't. No. All people, all races, all uh, men, women talk to little kids. And because for all of sin, them come short of the glory of God. There is no one who is better than another. Someone could be a prostitute. Someone could be a liar. Someone could be a homosexual. Someone could be a murderer. Someone could be a fornicator. And some of these things you can do of the heart. So it's not even it's not even to say, well, I've never done this and done that. Well, have you done of the heart? Because according to Jesus, you can do these things of the heart. So that's why, you know, it's okay. And we should be talking to these people, but we do not engage in those acts and try to put it off by saying, well, you know, I'm trying to get down on their level. No. You don't, you don't, you don't try to, you pull people up. You know what I mean? You pull people up. That's what you're trying to get them. You're not trying to get in the same position there are. You're trying to get them out. So in order to get them out, you have to stand above them, reach your hand down and pull them up. And this is not about, you know, to say, well, I don't want people to think that I'm being better than them. Or, but, you know, some people are going to think that regardless. Some people are going to use that as a scapegoat to not have to listen to the message that you're going to bring. They're going to find any and every excuse to whatever they can use and not have to listen. That's what they're going to do. But still, nonetheless, as long as you hold to biblical integrity then, you know, you can hold your head up high to say, you know what? I display the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you know, to the best of my ability. And I just simply gave the message. I didn't try to come speaking super fancy or trying to look good. Or I just came as myself, my, my personality. And I just gave the message. I gave the gospel. And I just let God get an increase. You know? So... Let's understand that these things should not be present in the church. Just because we, we want to uphold biblical integrity does not make us a Pharisee. A lot of people want to just go straight, oh, you're a Pharisee, oh, you're being religious. No, a Pharisee was someone who wanted to be righteous off of their own merit. It didn't have anything to do with just trying to be obedient to God. It was trying to marry your own righteousness that's what a pharisee is a lot of people it, it becomes convoluted they 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 try to mix the two when that's not the case for someone who's a believer and says yes i got it by grace alone by faith alone i can't work for this i didn't there's nothing i can do for this because now you want to be obedient that's how we should be you know, but and at the same time, please, let's let's understand that just because we see people who do this, we cannot automatically jump out the window and say, well, you must not be saved. Because we don't know the heart. Different times in the Bible, it talks about how God knows who are his. First Samuel 16, 7, God judges the heart. Man looks at the outside. God can only judge the heart. And if we see Galatians, Paul gives the dual nature of a believer. He gives the fruit of the Holy Spirit 
and he talks about the lust of the flesh. So someone who's a believer, just like we saw Paul talking about in Romans 7, how he, des he desired to do that, which was according to the law, according by the inward man. But he said, where I see myself doing good, there I also find evil to be present within my members. And Paul was talking about his flesh. He was talking about the spirit versus his flesh. So let's keep in mind that if we see things like this, let's not just automatically say, oh, well, they must not be saved. No, because if we look at 1 Corinthians, we see how Paul was talking to the church Corinth and how there was even someone in the church who was having sexual relations with their father's wife. Now, it doesn't specify whether it was a stepmother or bi biological mother, still nonetheless. It said that someone was having sex with their father's wife. And you had a lot of other things going on in that church. And Paul told them, he said how some of you were feminine, some of you were, were backbiters, were gossipers, were liars, were thieves, idolaters, fornicators. It says, he says, such were some of you. But ye are justified, ye are redeemed, ye are sanctified. Paul literally says, in spite of them doing all of those evil things, he says, but you guys currently are saved. He never once says, well, you know, you are doing these things. You obviously must not be saved. We got without a shadow of a doubt. I know you're not saved. Speaking as if he was God to say he knows their heart. The only thing Paul ever says in relation to that is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, where he talks about them possibly having believed the gospel in vain. But never does he outright just say, you guys are obviously not saved. Because he, he knew and understood how salvation is obtained, how salvation is maintained. And by keeping that consistent logic, that consistent biblical logic, he understood that since works don't keep you saved, nor get you saved, that these things they are doing, they're just doing it of the flesh. It doesn't mean that they're not true born again believers. It just means that they're carnal believers right now. But. He gives the other side too to say, you all may have believed in vain. You may not have truly believed. He put both of those things out there. He more so leaned towards the side of, yes, you guys are saved, but you're not acting like it. But he still put that possibility out there that you guys might have might have not have truly believed. So let us in like manner, whenever we see these things, we hear these horrendous acts. No matter how horrendous it is, no matter how bad you say, okay, this can't be done by a believer. There is nowhere in scripture where the flesh is limited by the spirit on what a person can do sinfully. It's not. And when it, when it comes to salvation, there are, there are no big sins. There are no little sins. What we would consider the littlest sin would be, you know... A super sin to God. I'm just saying, you know, a little white lie. There are no little white lies. God says you are not to lie. So there are no little lies. Just you are not to lie. Just the same way God said, don't eat up this fruit of this tree. We only take a bite. Did I say not eat it? Yeah. You may not think it's that bad, but you went against what I said. So let us understand that, yes, we are to uphold Christ and be representatives of the Lord um, according to how the Bible says. But at the same time, please do not let us slip into this, you know, kind of a work based salvation mentality when we see these things to automatically say, well, you are not saved because you are doing this. Because I can guarantee each and every one of us, myself included, are still struggling with certain things, even 
You can even think the wrong things. And that's sinful. It's not just even about actions. It's also about your words and what you think. What's in your heart. So I'm pretty sure that there are some things that we consider for ourselves. Oh, well, I do this, but it's not that bad. Really? Does God think that way? Or are you saying that about yourself? We have to be honest with ourselves. I, I have to be honest with myself. So, please, let us... Make sure that we are dis displaying fruits of the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, if we see things like this, let us not automatically jump out the window and say, oh, you're not saved. Because if you were to say that, then, you know, do you truly understand the gospel? Do you truly understand grace? Do you truly understand that eternal life is eternal and you can't lose it, nor can you earn it? You can only accept it because it is a gift of God. So, I wanted to make this video. Thank you all for your time. Till next time, I love you all. And God bless.